Hi. I just realized that I haven't done a monthly favorites video in, I think it's been well over a month. The last one that I did was in the old apartment that I lived in, so it's been a while. So that's what we're gonna do today. But I do wanna preface the video just by saying that I don't want you guys to feel like I'm promoting overconsumption or that you have to purchase the things that I talk about. So I'm putting in a lot of effort to recommend things like music and movies and books and activities and things that you don't have to spend money on. I also include recipes and things that I already own. So yeah, this isn't a video about purchasing things. It's just the things I've been enjoying this month. A few of them are things that I've purchased, but the vast majority of the things in this video that I'm going to be talking about will be not material items. The first thing I want to talk about is this book, Molly by Blake Butler. I just finished it and I would highly recommend reading this book if you're in the mood to just have a full body sob. This book is about Blake Butler's wife, Molly, who dies at the beginning of the book. And then he kind of tells the story of their whole relationship. And then he just kind of really gets into who Molly was as a person and it's so fascinating. It's like a character study. I'm just so nosy and I love books about interpersonal relationships and all of the qualities that make people love each other. This book also includes photos, which I love. One of my favorite books of all time is called Bad Eminence by James Greer. It includes photos too and these fake sponsored drink ads. And I just love when a book includes photos. I just think it makes the whole reading experience so much more interesting. Uh, but yeah, I guess check the trigger warnings. This one, it's very intense, but it's very, very good. I also read Mother Thing this month, which was recommended to me by a friend. And I knew that there was gonna be some body horror in this book. I didn't realize it was gonna be so, so gross, but I kind of love that. I love a gross book. Mother Thing is about a husband and wife and they're living with the husband's mother who's very depressed. They go to live with her to kind of take care of her. And she's been kind of chronically depressed for the husband's entire life. And so she's kind of just like this little frail like hunched over woman who just shuffles around the house and I mean obviously being depressed not obviously but like being depressed often makes you like not a great person you're not always capable of being a great person so she's just kind of this like miserable hateful woman that's really depressed and then she dies both of these books have there's a lot of death so she dies and then she starts haunting the husband and wife who are living in her house. The book's told from the wife's perspective and it's really funny because you're just kind of reading her internal monologue and she's really silly and just like thinks really funny things. It had a happy ending, which I don't think that's a spoiler. It, the ending is happy, which I actually don't know if I really liked. I think I like a more open-ended or even I like a sad ending. I was surprised that this book had a happy ending ultimately, but yeah, great book. I loved it. Um, yeah. Okay, now I'm going to move on to activities. So I was kind of noticing that as the school semester was wrapping up and I had to juggle a lot of deadlines with work and then also deadlines for school, all of my academic deadlines, I was getting really, really anxious and I've always been a very anxious person and Typically, I'm pretty good at managing it. I feel like I have pretty good understanding of what makes me anxious and how I can cope with it, but just this combination of school and work was becoming so overwhelming just in the month of kind of like end of March, early April. Yeah, it was just starting to feel a little bit unmanageable and I kind of knew that I needed to seek some outside help. And I've gone to therapy in the past and it's always really helped me. I've always really loved it but I didn't really feel like I had enough time to go and actually sit down with a therapist and like make the commute because I don't have a car. So I just figured that I would start using BetterHelp again. I've used them in the past. I really like their services and they're actually the sponsor of this video. BetterHelp connects you with licensed therapists who are trained to give you helpful, unbiased advice and they're just there to listen to you. All you have to do is visit their site. You can use my link, just answer a few questions and then BetterHelp will connect you to a licensed therapist who has years of experience helping people juggling problems like the ones that you're dealing with right now. And you can make appointments with them 
on your phone, either via video call, you can have a phone call with them, or you can just message them. It's just the easiest possible way for you to go to therapy. Typically, you'll be matched to a therapist within 48 hours, so it's not a huge wait time once you decide that you want to actually start going to therapy. You can visit the link that I have right here, or you can use my channel name when you're signing up, and then you'll receive a discount on your first month. Okay, the next activity I've really been enjoying has just been going out for a walk. I find that after I do a therapy session, if I go for a really long walk, that just really clears my head. It's been getting so warm outside and it's still like a little bit cool, which I actually kind of prefer. I really like going outside when I'm feeling a little bit like groggy or overwhelmed and just having some cool wind on my face is so nice. I just love a big long walk. Usually I'll go and get a coffee at Joni. <laughs> She keeps going into the frame. I'll get a coffee, go on a big long walk. I kind of like having a destination when I'm walking. And then I just turn around and I come home. And yeah, it's just such a nice way to break up a day. Oh, I have some fun music recommendations for you. Uh, or at least I think they're fun. Okay, they're not actually fun. <laughs> they're, oh, I'll explain. Okay, I've been listening to so much Sarah Grace White because she just came out with a single called Sinkhole and so I've been listening to that non-stop it's so good and so sad and then also her EP that's called Are You Here This Time so yeah I've just been listening to that single Sinkhole and then the EP I've kind of been listening to it for the last two weeks like every single day when I flew to Mexico, I was listening to two Mojave 3 albums kind of on repeat for both the flights there and the flights home. I think the albums are called, they're Excuses, Excuses for Travelers and Ask Me Tomorrow. And I just think they're the most perfect kind of sleepy music. I really like listening to them while I'm getting work done or if I'm on the bus. Oh, okay, and another album that I really like listening to while I'm getting work done is Mother Earth's Plantasia by Mort Garson. And I've loved this album for years. I actually just found out that he has merch for this album. So I just bought a shirt and I love it so much. I kind of, I wish I got it in white. I got it in this sort of beige color, which I should have known was gonna wash me out, but it's fine. I still really like it. So I've been listening to Plantasia, Plantasia Radio, and then also this other ambient album called Six Songs for Invisible Gardens, and then also the radio for Six Songs for Invisible Gardens. And they're all just these really, yeah, they're just like ambient music. They're kind of like the music that I include in my vlogs. And I, you guys ask me a lot of questions about the music I include in my vlogs, and it's usually just copyright free music. Like I know I could use jazz music or like acoustic music that I feel like a lot of people that put out vlogs use music like that, but that's not really the kind of music I listen to. So that's why I like putting ambient music in my vlogs because that's just what I listen to all the time. It just feels a little bit more authentic to me to use ambient music, but I know people think it's creepy and every once in a while I'll get a comment from people that tell me the music that I use is annoying and they want me to change it, but I'm not going to. So I'm just not going to. I've also been listening to Chapel Roan. Is that how you say her name? I think that's how you say it. I saw her performance at Coachella where she introduces a song and she just like says something really funny about her ex-girlfriend and then like dedicates the song to her. And I thought it was so funny. And so I've been listening to her whenever I'm getting ready to go out. And I love My Kink is Karma. That song is so good, but all of her songs are amazing. Pink Pony Club, yeah, she's incredible. Love her. Okay, now we're gonna move on to recipes. I've told you guys about the Bon Appetit soup recipe that I make constantly. I will eat soup in the summer. I don't care if it's boiling hot outside, I'll still eat soup year round. I feel like I go, it'll be like two weeks where I eat it every single day. Then I take a little break, but it's not because I'm tired of it. It's not because I like overdo it and eat too much of it. It's just because I get insecure about eating the same thing every single day. But honestly, I would eat this every single day if I could. It's so good. It's so comforting. It's really filling. And I've been taking a loaf of sourdough home with me every Sunday from the bakery that I work at. And I slice up the whole loaf of sourdough and then I put it in the freezer. And whenever I want a piece of bread, I just put it 
and a frying pan and I heat it up and then I eat it with this soup and it is the most perfect comfort meal. It's so good. There's something so comforting about having really, really good bread on hand just at your disposal. Another really good one that's really fast. It's not as filling or it is but then I find that like a few hours later I'm pretty hungry again but it's really good I would say for lunch if you're just in a hurry I found this recipe on it's either Instagram or TikTok but it's peanut soba noodles I'll put the video here or the recipe or whatever but yeah it's soba noodles and you just make this really quick peanut sauce with peanut butter and chili oil or chili paste soy sauce sesame oil and then you just put sesame seeds and green onions on top and I love it so much. I feel like if I made it with some kind of protein then it would be perfect but I often just make this when I'm kind of in a rush and I'm just feeling really lazy and I just need to eat something fast but that's a really good one. Yeah I love it. Okay I don't know if the lighting and the camera angle is completely different right now but a friend called me and then we were just yapping and yapping and time kind of got away from me, uh, but now I'm back and we're gonna carry on. I wanna talk about movies because I feel like I've been watching more movies than I ever really have. Like typically I get home from work, from a day of working and I don't really wanna watch TV, I just wanna read. But lately I've kind of been liking watching a movie. I think it's because I started subscribing to Mubi and I don't subscribe to Netflix or Crave anymore. I really just use Movie exclusively. And so I've been finding a lot of good movies there. I watched this movie called The Souvenir and it's about this woman. She, it takes place in somewhere in the UK and she is a film student and she's kind of shy. She seems a little bit, maybe just like lonely and introverted. And she meets this older man and he has a job my god, I should really know more about this. But he has a job. It seems like he works for the government, uh, potentially. I might be wrong. Uh, anyway, he wears a suit every day when he goes to work. And he is clearly keeping a secret from her. And she doesn't quite know what it is. And she's kind of naive and in love with him. But it's sort of unclear why she's in love with him. Like, he's kind of funny. And I think they have an interesting relationship. Like, she likes collaborating with him when she's writing scripts and doing work but he, I don't find him particularly charming so I don't really know what she likes so much about him but it gets really upsetting and it was really good. Another one that I watched on movie was called Passages and it was so incredible. I think if you like movies, oh, there was another one that it really reminded me of. The movie Love which is directed by Gaspar Noé that movie is so incredible. It's one of my all-time favorites, but Passages reminded me so much of Love. And it's about this queer couple, they're married, and their entire relationship is basically thrown into crisis after one of the husbands begins an affair with a young woman. And he's basically just like willing to risk it all to be with this woman. The guy that's having the affair is so incredibly selfish and unlikable. And he's just like a miserable, awful person. But then his husband is like this sweet, sweet man. And oh, it's really good. Yeah, and it's just beautiful. Like all the cinematography is beautiful. I believe it takes place in Paris uh, or somewhere in Europe. God, I'm so bad at actually telling you about any of these movies. I can't remember any of the details about them, but it takes place somewhere in Europe. So. All of the scenery is incredible. I actually might rewatch that today. I really loved that movie. Yeah, I feel like those are those are the movies I would recommend. I'm not really watching any TV right now. Yeah, no, no TV, but those movies I really liked. My next favorites are makeup and skincare. For like the last six years, I've been using this same foundation every single day because I was convinced that it was like my holy grail foundation. And I think just recently, I haven't been enjoying it as much. I think it's, I like how sheer it is, but sometimes I want just like a little bit more coverage. But I realize that I don't really have a concealer that's actually my skin tone. I have the NARS, I think it's the NARS Creamy Concealer, and it's a little bit too light for my skin. And so I decided to mix it with the Say Beauty Glow, this thing. It's just the bronze shade. And I mixed the concealer 
and that bronzing, it's like a gel thing on my hand. And then I used that all over my face and I really, really liked the way it looked. And I feel like that's maybe what I'm gonna do for when I go to events, like if I have to go to a wedding, that would be the base makeup that I do instead of using the foundation that I use like every single day. This next thing is like the most unsexy product of all time, but I swear by it because I have the weirdest combination skin. My skin that's dry on my face is so unbelievably dry. And so sometimes when I put makeup on, it just like cakes and creases and clings to my dry spots and it looks so bad. But when I use the Eucerin, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Eucerin eczema cream, which I'm pretty sure is actually a body cream, but I use it on my face. It's totally fine. Nothing bad's ever happened when I've used it on my face. In fact, only good things have happened. It feels amazing. It's so thick and I love the way it smells and I just feel like my makeup sits on my face so well when I use it. And yeah, I'm obsessed with it. I'm gonna use it every single day from now until forever. Now, the last things are clothing and jewelry. I ordered this ring from Mondo Mondo when they were having their birthday sale. I've always wanted to get jewelry from them. And so I'm really happy that I ordered this. I really love that the two beads, I just love the colors of them. They're two little glass beads, one's green and one's amber. I will say the ring, it turns my finger green, which I wasn't expecting. I did kind of think that the quality was gonna be better just considering what I paid for the ring, but honestly, that's on me for not checking. So that's the one drawback. I did think it was a little bit higher quality when I ordered it, but that's my fault. But I just really like the way that it looks. I don't know if you can see that I have this scrunchie in my hair, but I it's from Good Squish and I got this one and then a white one a few months ago and it took me a little while to figure out how to actually wear them just because they're so huge but i feel like i finally figured it out and i've been wearing them every single day for the past couple weeks and i love them i'm considering getting them in like a million more colors because i just think they just tie every outfit together and they're so fun and they're really high quality i'm just obsessed with them definitely a big favorite Okay, now the last thing is I've shown you guys my L.L. Bean jacket before. It's just like a tan camel colored L.L. Bean jacket. And recently when I went to go to a furniture warehouse, I showed you guys in my last vlog, this furniture warehouse that I went to visit. And the guy that has that keeps all his furniture in this warehouse had all of these vintage clothes. And we were talking about L.L. Bean jackets and he had one that's this color. And he was telling me that he's always wanted the camel jacket, the camel L.L. Bean field jacket. And so we ended up trading. And so now I have this one and I think it just looks a lot better on me. I think the camel color just kind of washed me out a little bit. The one drawback about this jacket is I find it a little bit more difficult to style. I think if it was a true brown, then maybe it would be a little bit easier to wear, but it's kind of like a burgundy. And so it doesn't go with tons of my clothes, but I still really, really love it. And I just think it looks better on me. Okay, this one's really random. I totally forgot to tell you about this Chobani oat milk. It is so good. It's Chobani vanilla oat milk and it tastes exactly like Lucky Charms. If you put this in tea, like in an Earl Grey tea or a chai tea, oh my God, it is so good. I'm obsessed with it. It's kind of hard to find. Like I get it at Superstore usually. And oh my God, it's amazing. It's my favorite oat milk ever. And I don't usually like a flavored nut beverage, but this one is just so good. I'm so obsessed with it. Okay, that's it. That's all I've got for you. I will see you so soon. Oh yeah, I meant to ask if there are any videos that you want me to make, uh, let me know because I've been filming a lot of vlogs, but I would like to mix things up just a little bit. I feel like that could keep things interesting for you and for me. So let me know if there's anything specific that you want to see. Uh, but yeah, I will see you in the next video. You're so great. And I'm so happy that you're here. Uh, yeah, have a good day. Goodbye.